The protesters nowhere to be seen. Pearl Square in Manama now back under control of the authorities. State TV is showing much of what had been there has now been burnt to the ground. The demonstrators expected a crackdown. It came just before dawn. Army trucks and armoured cars moved into the square. Pictures sent to Al Jazeera even showed helicopters in the sky. As police moved in, Bahrain TV showed these pictures of protesters' tents on fire. This gives some idea of the size of the police presence. Eyewitnesses said as they moved in, firing tear gas and buckshot, they were met by petrol bombs. Two policemen were reported killed after being hit by speeding cars as protesters left the area. Slowly, the square was cleared. The crackdown came just a day after Bahrain's king declared martial law and called in troops from neighbouring Saudi Arabia to help shut down the protests. This is an appeal on behalf of the Bahraini people. It is being made to the U.S. President, the U.S. Congress, Britain, the European Union, and the United Nations. By now, you have witnessed the major human rights violations that Bahrainis face in demonstrating for basic democratic rights. Please. Do not send arms to this regime. The Bahraini government does not only have serious human rights issues. This regime is operating illegally. It has been operating illegally for the last 30 years. It illegally suspended its constitution in 1975. It suspended the Constitution for 25 years and ruled by force. The regime then illegally replaced the Constitution in 2002 to permanently disenfranchise the population and give one man unchecked power. Bahrainis have been struggling for their legally enshrined rights for 30 years. Please, as a precondition for any military or financial support, this regime should be required to abide by the 1973 Constitution based on
proportional representation. This constitution is Bahrain's original constitution upon independence. If you believe in the rule of law and oppose rogue nations that will engage in any criminal activity to hold onto power, you will make this a precondition. The 1973 Constitution set up an elected body, an elected parliament, that citizens could use to pass new laws, and the Constitution has strict conditions regarding changes. The Emir dissolved the parliament in 1975 for disagreeing with him on important issues, and he suspended the Constitution. He used emergency laws to rule for 25 years instead. The next Emir illegally replaced the Constitution in 2002, making himself a king with unchecked power. Bahrain is not really a monarchy. Hamad al-Khalifa changed the name of the country from the state of Bahrain to the kingdom of Bahrain in 2002. This regime uses an imported security force to enforce this because it does not allow the native Shia population to serve in the police. The 2002 Constitution is clearly illegal. The 1973 Constitution, which is the original Constitution, requires a two-thirds vote in Parliament for amendments. Hamad al-Khalifa added many amendments that had never been approved by the people or voted on by Parliament. He made himself the person that appoints judges, wiping out the judicial system's independence. He removed the ability to initiate law from the Parliament and transferred it to the Prime Minister undermining the people's legislative authority. He transferred financial auditing of the state budget away from Parliament. He even curtailed freedom of speech. He made many other outrageous changes as well that are clearly illegal, such as giving himself the ability to dissolve Parliament for an indefinite period of time. Hamad al-Khalifa tried to legitimize amending the Constitution in a popular vote the year before. The vote was on a document called the National Action Charter. However, none of these, none of these previously mentioned changes were explicitly approved of in the election. The document had merely offered to add an appointed consultative body to Parliament and make the system more democratic if Hamad al-Khalifa was turned into a constitutional monarch. Even here, the people were misled. He gave this appointed body a required role in passing laws in, in further amendments to the Constitution, and this effectively 
disenfranchised the population by neutralizing the elected parliament. Hamad al-Khalifa had promised this newly consultative body would only be giving advice and not be passing laws in a signed agreement in 2001. To the President of the United States, please ask yourself, can you send arms to a regime that suspends its constitution for 25 years to rule by martial law? Can you send arms to a regime that arbitrarily replaces the nation's constitution to give itself unchecked power? If the answer is no, you cannot send arms to this regime. This is not even a matter of choosing between a dictator or democracy. Does the United States expect its allies to follow their own laws? Please make abiding by the original 1973 Constitution based on proportional representation, a prerequisite for support. We mention proportional representation because the regime has redrawn the voting districts to further neutralize the majority. For example, the first district of the North has 16,000 voters, while the 6th District of the South has less than 800 voters. The 1973 Constitution is not nearly perfect. It still places far too much power in one man, and the people want their democratic rights. This Constitution is merely the very minimum you should require. At least it gives the people some influence on the laws ruling over them. You should expect your allies to at least follow their own laws. Otherwise, you can arm any regime. The Bahraini people have been asking their regime to follow the law for the last 30 years. Parliament is our demand, says the graffiti the government has tried to conceal. Everywhere you look, walls and buildings are covered in slogans calling for the restoration of the constitution and representative government. The Al Khalifas continued following the withdrawal of the British in 1971 and the establishment of independence. At the same time, the movement towards a more open political system began in earnest. In 1972, Bahrain's first National Constituent Assembly was elected. It started debating important issues, including labour laws and the budget, but its life was tragically short lived.
the government, encouraged by proposals from expatriate Britain Ian Henderson, proposed a draconian bill for state security. When the National Assembly rejected it outright, the Prime Minister resigned. The next day, the 26th of August 1975, the Emir issued a decree which has since become notorious, suspending the Constitution and dissolving the National Assembly. Today's graffiti calls for the return of parliamentary politics, much of it written by people too young to remember their country's brief flirtation with democracy. For 20 years, the people of Bahrain have been struggling hard to reinstate the constitution, but their calls have gone unheeded. As the petition gathered pace, the El Khalifa government tried to preempt the popular movement by arresting a leading supporter of the petition, Sheikh Ali Solman. People reacted by taking to the streets in an explosion of anger that had been building up over the years. A few days of the arrest of Sheikh Salman, the whole of Bahrain was in a state of militant civil disobedience. Despite the peacefulness of the protests, Ian Henderson, the director of public security, and the very man whose draconian security proposals had precipitated the dissolution of parliament 20 years earlier, reacted by ordering an all-out offensive against unarmed demonstrators. من فبراير 2001 كانت زيارة صاحب الجلالة إلى منزل سماحة السيد علوي البريفي في منطقة النعيم ليقدم الحكم تعهده الثاني باحترام الدستور. وإننا نطمح أن يؤكد لنا صاحب السمو شخصيا أولا حاكمية الدستور على الميثاق. وأن لا مساس بأي شيء من الثوابت الدستورية. ثانيا الصلاحية التشريعية الكاملة للمجلس المنتخب. ثالثا البدء الفوري المرحلي بتطبيق الميثاق بعد التصديق عليه. رابعا النية الجادة بالإسراع بتفعيل الدستور. خامسا الاستمرار في المبادرات الكريمة الصادرة عن صاحب السمو التي توفر المناسات الملائمة للتفاعل الإيجابي مع الميثاق. سادسا نتمنى أن تصدر مذكرة توضيحية رسمية لمواجهة كل هذه الغموضات وإزالة كل هذه النواجس. في الختام نبتهل إلى المولى أن يحفظكم وأن يسدد خطاكم في طريق البناء والعطاء وأن يوفقكم لما يحب ويرضى إنه سميع كبير السلام عليكم.
سمحت صاحب الله شاعر انت ما قلت ان يترجم لها ونحن مطمئنين بس نريد ان نسمع منه ان الدستور يجب لا شك الدستور هذا لا عيش بن سلمان احسن وهذا ما مع شعبه وانا ان شاء الله من يد الله وعيسى بن سلمان ولكم housing, run-down and dirty streets, in mainly Shiite villages that have not benefited from Bahrain's economic boom. The plan was to report on poverty in Bahrain, but almost immediately it becomes obvious this is a story about long-standing tensions between the majority Shia and the ruling Sunni class here. Inside this house, I talk with the head of a Shia family, who says two of his sons are unemployed. The presence of our camera gets everyone going. The mother chimes in, and then a young Shiite man, so candid in his tirade against the Sunni prime minister, I'm taken aback. How do you see your future? My future, it's like my visit, not okay. So, not good. There is no future. Bin Salman here in country there is no future. Let him to listen, let him to know. What is this love? This is bad luck, really, it's bad luck. We need something good for us. Now are you afraid that if you say this and it appears on the camera that I don't care about them. Let him see anything good they want to see. If I have something good to do, I will do. I will take it. Is it okay if we use this on TV? Yes, you can put it in Bahrain channels. Bahrain has been ruled by a Sunni monarchy for more than 200 years, first as a British protectorate and since 1971 as an independent Gulf state. 
But these Shiites say the story is not about poverty, but about systematic discrimination against them. The wave of political turmoil consuming the Middle East right now, hitting very close to home for one mother in Bahrain. She's now starving herself, starving herself, in a desperate attempt to try to save her family. Here's CNN's Amber Lyon. Zainab al Khawaja says she is ready to starve to death unless Bahraini authorities release her father and husband. If my father is going to be killed, I want to die as well. Uh, we've always been taught by my father, dying with dignity is better than living as slaves. Security forces burst into her home, searching for her father, Abdul Hadi al Khawaja, a prominent human rights activist. They started beating him severely and they dragged him down the stairs, threw him on the ground and um, Five, four or five men were kicking him and punching him and one of them had his hand on my father's throat the whole time and the, the last thing I heard my father say was that he, he couldn't breathe he was gasping for air and saying that he couldn't breathe um, I'm on hunger strike uh, for the release of my father and my husband my uncle and my brother-in-law who were taken from our house after an attack where my father was 
beaten until he was unconscious and bleeding. Um, where they were given none of their rights. There was no arrest warrant. Nobody knocked on our door. Nobody gave any reasons for their arrest. And since their arrest, we, their family, have heard nothing about them. We don't know where they are or what's happening to them.